All right. So this is the next steps class. I call it the next steps for ambitious beginners. And maybe that's all of us. I certainly feel like an ambitious beginner. And, um, but it is aimed at beginners. So if you are an intermediate player or better, this really is not the class for you. And I really don't want you to participate because it's not for you. You are more than willing to say, I keep the door open. I have no problem with you sitting in and uh, listening. Um, I think that uh, that's the way it should be run in the Billies. I know that's not quite kosher, but um, I, I can, you know, it just works that way. Okay, so if you're, if you're an intermediate or beginner, then, then uh, intermediate or better, if you've got vast experience with two over one, you're really wasting your time, okay? So I, what I want are people who are, have not played two over one before, and beginners and intermediates. And I'm going to tell you right now that it's my firm and abiding belief that two over one is how we should all learn to play bridge to begin with. Because it sort of sucks that we learn standard American and then we switch over to two over one when two over one is easier to play. It's sort of bizarre. It's kind of like driving a souped up car though, okay? Um, and you'll see that as we go on. But one thing I want you to remember is that it's easy, easier than standard American. This is nothing complicated. You have this to do um, because there are probably some people here who haven't heard this story before. When I learned how to play two over one, I read the Paul Thurston book, which is a great book. We're not going to quite learn that version of it, but it's going to be close. Um, when I, I read that book and then I wanted to play two over one with my main partner at the time, Ellen, and Ellen didn't want to read the book. So I literally taught her how to play two over one by just swearing her to not bid at the two level in a lower ranking suit after I bid unless she had game values. And she figured out the rest from there. Okay, and that's what I mean when I say it's a natural system of bidding. It's a natural system. Okay. You're going to find that there are no artificial bids. There is not going to be a lot of memorization. Okay, You're going to know what you should bid pretty much instinctively. Okay, So that's number one. right? Natural, easy, don't doubt your instincts. You're probably right. Okay, You're probably right on what you're thinking about bidding. Okay. You've been playing standard long enough. You know what a natural system is. The second thing that's really important to stress, okay, is that there are at least three main variants of two over one game force bidding. Um, what we're going to learn is a system that is based on shape more than values, okay, and I will point that out as we go along, but you'll get the hang of it after a while. I think it's easier, and as some of you know, uh, for playing with me, I can never really figure out how to count points. Do we have a voice? I, I thought, Todd, did you, is the voice still on? Okay. Um, Maureen, hi, how are you? Um, I did notice, I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but there are some glitches between BBO and the new Chrome version. Um, uh, hopefully Chrome will get that settled out. But if you, if you go to a, if you go to a, um, well, never mind. I'm not going to digress already. It's the beginning of the hour. Um, there's plenty of time for that later. So, so bid naturally, you're going to find this instinctive. And we're gonna, and there's several variants. The variant of two over one that I'm gonna teach you is based on shape. We'll let Marie talk first. She's my hero.
You know I love it, Maureen. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So what you're going to find is that our version, what we're going to discuss, is almost always based on shape. In other words, we're going to bid naturally. And when you have an extra card in the suit that's unexpected, you're probably going to be showing it one way or the other. What we're not going to be bidding on is values. Okay, So you're never going to find yourself in a situation, really, where your response is going to be based on having more points. Okay, and that's because when we start a bid, when we start our auction with a two over forcing bid, two over one forcing bid, we're going to game anyways. So I'm more interested in showing shape and not skipping bids to show extra values. We're going to game no matter what. All right, so this is, and if, if you look it up, basically we're playing a Marty Bergen style of two over one. Um, all right, so. Here, the first week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the actual bid. Okay, the actual bid that we're discussing. And what it is, is um, basically six auctions. Right? When you start with one spade and responder immediately bids without any intervening bid or double, immediately bids two hearts, two diamonds, or two clubs. In other words, they bid a lower ranking suit at the two level. You all remember uh, Fred there who's helping out again so that I can have a movie and also see all the cards. Um, so when your part when you open a spade and your partner bids two clubs, right? That's the type of bid we're talking about. It could have been two diamonds, it could have been two hearts, all right? It's a natural bid. In the case of the miners, it promises four. Okay, And I have seen people in the bill who actually know how to place a bridge bid it with three. That's not what we're doing. Okay, It promises four. Could be five, could be a whole bunch more, but it promises four. All right. Um, I assume that's for somebody else. I'm going to stop looking at the chat line. Um, so bid here of two clubs is a game-forcing bid. Okay? It means that my partner has an opening hand. Right? And you might think back sort of the matrix. If some of you have um, created this matrix of minimum invitational and maximum hands. And what we know is that an opening hand versus an opening hand should make a game. Now, it's a card game, so sometimes it doesn't, right? But an opening hand versus an opening hand should be a game. So my partner, in bidding two over one in this lower-ranking suit, is saying, I have a game-forcing bid. I have an opening hand. Very likely, it's a hand they would have been open if they had been the one to bid first. Okay? So... It's got to be a lower ranking suit, and it's got to have at least four in it if it's a minor. But let me get to a little bit doing the next hand. Maybe this will work out best. Um, we're going to start by just doing these first two bids. We're going to get to recognize a two over one bid first. So Fred bids a spade. You can't hear it on the iPad, my friend. Doesn't work. Got to be online using version three. This time, my partner bids two hearts. Now, this is a rule. If you're going to be writing down rules, this is one you might want to write down. 
that if you use two hearts as a two over one bid, you have five hearts. It's much like standard American. When you bid two hearts with your 10 plus points, you should have five hearts. So it's the same thing here. This bid promises five. So one spade, two hearts promises five, but one spade, two of a minor promises four. All right? So the other thing that this does, it establishes a game force, period. We're going to game, and that's all there is to it. Okay, where we go next determines, uh, is, is a little bit more relaxed now, as you can imagine. There's no more worrying, oh, my, will my partner pass this before we get to game? Do I need to jump to four here so that I make sure that we get to game? None of that. The partnership agrees we're going to game. Get another one. Fred, Zen Master, opens a spade, and our partner bids two diamonds. Okay. Game force. Okay. So we're getting the idea there, right? We can see what this looks like, right? If you open one heart and your partner bids two spades, that's not a game forcing bid. If you open one diamond and your partner bids two hearts, that's not a game forcing bid. Okay? Those are jump shifts. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a two-level bid in a lower ranking suit. Okay, so if you think about that for a second, that means that there are only six possible auctions. One spade, two hearts, two diamonds, two clubs. One heart, two diamonds, two clubs, and one diamond, two clubs. Okay, right? so this is fairly simple. There are six game forcing auctions we can have with the two over one. Now, let me ask you this what do you think happens when the opening bid starts with one heart? Will we have as many game forcing auctions? Probably not, because someone can bid one spade. Right? East could overcall one spade, and now our two over one game auction is off. South here, Fred may bid one spade, feeling it's important to show four spades first. Right? He might bid the ambitious, ambiguous major here and bid one spade. And you won't have, and you'll be back in the same sort of standard American stuff you've always used, a natural, Amer a natural way of bidding. So when you are in one heart, the only two over one auctions are two diamonds and two clubs. Okay? And those will only be used with, um, when, when there's not a four-card major to be bid, with one exception that we'll get to. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Now imagine what happens. Now imagine what happens when the opening bid is one diamond, right? Now, like any natural system, well, it's the game of bridge, isn't it? What we bid for is to find major games, right? And when we sit at, down at the table, that's all we want is major games. Right? That's what that's what we're looking for. That's the most that's the best paying major game, 420, right? Or 620. And uh, if possible, we'd like to get the slam, but we don't really want to get the slam and go down one. We want to get those games, those major games. And when I don't know, Marsha, um try a different browser. Try a different browser. Um Somebody could, uh, I bet you there's something going on. There's too many of them for problems. Uh, remember, there will also be a movie um, that will have voice on it. 
All right, so back to what I was saying. So now when we get to a diamond opening, right, what we're, we're still looking for a major gain. Right? That doesn't change just because we're opening a diamond. Um, Okay, so um, I'm not sure what to suggest for Marsha. If anybody has come up with a solution on this issue of whether the voice is working, feel free to, to text her. Um, she usually gets voice, so I don't know what's going on. Um, anyways, one diamond opening, we're still looking for a major game, right? So this two over one auction that we're going to have is probably not going to come up very often, right? Because p opponents may bid a major suit. Our partner may bid a major suit pretty much obligated to bid a major suit, right? And, um, and we have, and because that's what we want, a major game, right? If they're balanced and they don't have a four card major, they're unlikely to bid two over one, right? They're more likely to bid something in no trump to limit their hand. So with a one diamond start, it is the rare occasion that you have a two over one auction. So this game forcing tool that we're talking about, this game forcing tool that we're talking about, is going to be you, you're going to see it more with a spade opening, a little less with a heart opening, now here and there with a the diamond opening, right, and never with a club opening, right, because there is no suit less than a club. So we have six auctions, and they sort of peter out. Okay. So that said. They're incredibly powerful. So let's go back and look again at a, a, a different start here with Fred. So on this one, Fred opens a spade. And his partner bids two clubs. Now, remember I told you that this is a natural system and that we're going to base it on shape, okay? So whenever you open at, at the bridge table, your second bid is always about defining your hand better for your partner. And usually that means showing size and showing shape, how many points you have and what kind of shape you have. Let's just let it roll. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, sorry. And, and remember, Marsha, uh, somebody can tell her, there will be a movie. Um, and uh, if anybody can help her out, I'd appreciate it. So one spade, pass, two clubs, pass. My obligation here is to show shape. I don't need to show values. We're going to game. Now, this point that I'm making is an incredibly different point in every system, of every, every variant of two over one you play. So you may end up playing two over one with somebody who disagrees with this bid. I'm not wrong. They're not wrong. Okay. I am saying we're going to show shape because it's the easiest. Frankly, I think it's the most helpful. Shape's more important than points in a game forcing auction. Right. So what do you think I might bid? Think naturally. What would your, be your instinct? If what you want to do here is show shape, what is your rebid here? Anybody? I don't have, I mean, think naturally, bid naturally. Yeah, we're going to bid two no Trump. I don't have a diamond suit, so I'm not going to bid it, right? So the idea is bid naturally. So I'm going to, sh with the idea that we're going to show shape, I don't have an extra spade, okay? Two clubs promises four. Two clubs promises four, right? And so we may have, as Susie is probably thinking about, it's entirely possible we have a spade fit, of at least we have at least seven of them. We may have more, right? Because if North has a five or six card spade suit, a club suit, that's probably our suit. But I, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show shape, right? Now you'll get different versions of two over one. You're going to have to just understand that the different versions are out there. 
If you were losing, learning the Mike Lawrence method of playing this, this would be promising um, stoppers in every suit and would be dying, and, and he could bid two spades here again, right? I just don't find that useful. I want the two spade bid to show an extra. Okay, and so does Marty Burton. So let's look at another rebid. Pass. All right, our partner bids two hearts. Remember we said that a two over one bid made in hearts promises five, right? What is our rebid? And I told you, this is easy stuff. Think natural, think shape. What do you think we want to bid here? <laughs> okay, Susie, no need to jump yet. There, that bid has a special meaning. Glad you brought it up. We'll get to that at some point. This is actually not the hand for the jump. There is a time to jump to three spades, but that requires having a slam going hand that is not gonna lose spade tricks. Like this one could lose two spade tricks if the ace and queen are sitting over the top of south. Okay, so that's not this hand anyways, but we'll get to that at some point. So two spades, right? Shape, think shape. I promised my partner five, and now I'm gonna tell him I have six. Right. And partner bids another heart. And, I, and honest to God, natural, instinctive. What do you think it means? He said he'd had five before. Now he's saying he has six. So now what do you do? You could support his, right? You know you have a fit now. You can, you can, you know, you can, you know, at least you could play four hearts. You have an extra spade. Still, you can bid spades again. He hasn't actually denied. Well, I guess he has denied two. He apparently has six hearts and he bid three. So he wanted you to see the extra. Let's say he, um, what if he did this though? Um, let me do this. Let's say he bids two spades, or uh, three spades, rather. Now we know, right? You told him six, and now you know he has at least two, right? So you found your fit, and you did it at the three level. Now here's the key, right? Is once we find a trump fit, we already have a game forcing auction. We know we're going to game. So let that sink in as we as we do a few more responses here. Okay, once we find a trump suit, we know we're going to game. Fred, who's getting all the spades in an opening hand every time, opens one. We get a two spade bid, two diamond bid, right? Game forcing. What's our rebid? Yeah, this is natural. Just, just two hearts, no need to jump. No need to jump. And then, and we're never in a hurry playing this, okay? So two hearts, right? Saying I started with five spades and at least four hearts. We get a pass. Come on, pass. And two spades. All right, so now we found a game for us. We're game forcing, and we're only at the two level. Okay. Now, if you want to, if you want to get your get your pen out here and write down another rule, this is the way we're going to play it. Right. This is uh, this is from Eric Rodwell. So this is not me. This is Rodwell's bid. Okay. If we are in a two over one game forcing auction, 
and we discover a trump fit at the two level, we're going to make one more shape bit. Okay? We get one more natural bit. This is only when we find the fit at the two level. All right? Remember that only at the two level. So basically, it's going to be a situation like this. One spade, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades. We have a trump fit. We're going to the game. What do we want to do to show our partner more about shape? In other words, we get a natural bid here. One more natural bid. What would we bid? Yeah, let's show them the extra heart. Absolutely. Right. So now partner knows we're 5-5, five, five, or at least 5-5. Five, five. What would you bid if you had um, five spades, uh, um, four hearts, and doubletons in the minors? And you wanted to show more about shape, what would you do? So you were five, four, two, two. You were five, four, two, two. Yeah, you'd show balanced, right? And what if you were five, four, three diamonds? And one club, what would you bid? Yeah, this is as simple as, like I told you, it's so instinctive, and I just want you to think naturally. Okay, now remember, this shape-showing thing that we're doing here is only when we have a trump fit at the two level. It's not when we agree on trump at the three level. All right? We're going to do something else entirely then. But when we agree on trump at the two level, we're going to show one more natural bid by opener. All right. Let's look at some heart openings. All right, so our partner opens one heart. What do you want to bid? Two clubs is a possibility. And Susie points out that two no trump, which is Jacoby two no trump, is also a possibility. And that shows four plus support and game force. Right? We learned that one of the first gadgets we add on at some point in time is we learned how to play Jacoby 2 No Trump and the continuations that follow. Right? What Jacoby 2 No Trump suggests is that responder has a balanced hand. Okay? So I would tend to bid that here. Okay, because I will find out more about shape if I bid two no trump. If I use Jacoby two no trump, I will find out more about shape. Because my partner is obligated to show me a short suit. He does that by bidding at the three level. A bid at the three level after Jacoby, absolutely alert less. I should have written anything there, but two no trump is alerted. And three clubs is alerted. Both of them get alerted. Three clubs shows a stiff or a void in clubs. And the reason why this is a helpful bit is, what are you going to do now, sitting in south seat, finding out that your partner is short in clubs? Does that excite you or not? And wouldn't it be cooler if he was short in spades, where you have three losers? Instead, he's short in the suit where you've got six points, missing the ace. Yeah, so probably you just big game there. See what I said? I mean, there's some, that's actually, if you think about it, that's responders' only game-forcing bid when you're playing standard American. I can't really think of another one until you until your rebid, at least, where you get to... Um, Establish a game force on your first bid. All right, so one heart, pass. We 
we have 10, 12, for 16 points. Our partner is promising 12, 13, right? An opening hand. Uh, we have two hearts. We're sort of balanced. What's your bid? This will be interesting. One no Trump is underselling it there, Carol. Right? One no Trump is, we'll come to that. It's, uh, but we're not going to bid one no Trump there. We want to make a game for us and bid. We, we don't want to have to be talking about um, um, about how many um, what suit we're going to play in and stuff without even knowing that we have a game yet. Well, let's find out we have a game first, and then we can talk about everything else. Um, it's interesting. We're getting two clubs there. <coughs> I'll go with that. No, two clubs is right. Two clubs is right. Three no Trump is is... Really, in most cases, with a, any kind of reasonable partner, we should promise three hearts and a choice of game. Um, but um, two clubs will establish the game for us. So we're going to bid our four card suits up the line. Right, so two clubs, and then our partner makes a shape-showing bid in response to our clubs. And look at that. He likes your club suit. Right? You don't have hearts, but it's sort of looking like he is 5-4 five, or 5-5 five, five in hearts and clubs. Hmm? So now we go hunting. We've got 16 points. We've got 16 points. They have at least 13. They have some shortage somewhere, right? Because it must be short in diamonds or spades if they've got long hearts and long clubs. We got a game for us in place. We could poke around, right? We could we could bid three no Trump here. We don't think that you're interested in slam, you know. And I mean, you know, most club dates playing match points, you probably just want to bid three no Trump here and then be set and be happy with a nice club fit. And if you happen to make uh, all the tricks, you know, maybe uh, you probably score okay, right? But maybe you're too good for that, right? So maybe you need to go looking for slam. And we're not going to go looking for slams today. Sorry about that. We'll do that another day. Today is just about these, these, these beginning things. So we get a one heart opener. We have seven, five, 12, 15 points in a six card suit. What's your bid? Yeah, we're going to establish a game for us. We're going to do that by betting two diamonds. So the game force is in place. Our partner shows us shape. Right? So an extra heart. And we're going to bid naturally as well. So we certainly are thinking that we have three no Trump, right? Um, partner has six hearts. We have a, a singleton. It seems like if they have an opening hand, we should be able to have communication between each other. Um, but we haven't really shown our hand yet completely, right? What if what a partner has... Avoid and has four diamonds or something, right? Six hearts, four diamonds, uh, th three clubs to the ace king, and a and a void in spades, right? We might want to be in slam, right? So we probably want to just keep con bidding, con um, naturally. And notice that if we were to make this bid, playing standard American, our partner could pass it. But because we're playing the game force by starting with the two over one bid, our partner can't pass three diamonds. So we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to worry about it. And our partner, who knows? What happens if our partner bids four diamonds? Huh? Now we go now we're probably gonna go slam searching. Right? We got the ace king of spades, we got the ace in the club suit. Remember when we uh 
when we're looking at evaluating our hands, having the controls in outside suits have a ton of a lot more value than if we had, you know, King Jack or something, right? We know we're getting two spades tricks. We know we're getting a club trick. And then we have a stiff in their suit, which is unfortunate. But maybe if they have the ace-king, that means we're throwing away our losers on their hearts. Right? So this is shaping up to be a pretty nice hand. Everybody, everybody with me so far? Right? So we, we just we established the game force, and now we get to poke around. We get to poke around, find a strain. We never stress out about the fact that our partner might pass us and not go to game because we have this ironclad agreement that a two over one bid in a lower ranking suit is a solemn vow to get to game. All right, um, so uh, not that one. Let's look at this one. Here's some, what I would mention about once we get down into the lower suits. Right? And this time Fred's going to open diamond, right? He's got 14 points. He's got 14 points and he's got four card diamond and four card club suit, right? Everybody opens a diamond here? I think that's the general consensus. I know that when I think I'm going to bid one no trump, I sometimes open one club. But one diamond, I think, is the way we're supposed to do it. Okay, yeah. I, I, I kind of think if I'm going to bid no trump, I might want to hear if my partner has a diamond suit first. Uh, but we'll do it this way. You've got two four card miners. Bid your diamonds first. And partner has the ability to make a two over one bid, but instead he bids three, three no trump. And who wouldn't? You got to pass them out. Huh? That's what you bid with, though. Right? You got four, five, six, nine, four, thirteen points. Your partner opens one diamond. You don't have a four card major. Thirteen to sixteen, balanced hand. Most people would do that. That's that's the most likely bid. But oh, that's weird. Okay. I'm not sure why. Oh, you're in North Sand. That's why. That's I know why. Never mind. We're gonna skip over that. I have used giving the South Hand. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that right now. Let me find another hand here. Follow one through just a little further. We'll go back to this hand. All right. This is the one where he opens one spade and our partner bids two clubs. Shape showing bid. What's, what's our bid here? Two no trump, exactly. We're going to bid two no trump. Showing a balanced hand. Part will know, oh, he must be 5-3-3-2. Three, three, That's the only balanced hand, right? That starts with a five card major. Right? So now partner bids three spades. And now we get to sort of the fun part. I asked you to have this sort of ruminating in the back of your head here. We have a game forcing auction, right? We don't need to worry about our next step. Our partner will get us to game, which obviously is going to be a spade game. So we can bid anything we want, right? So what is our productive thing, right? Now we're at the three level. Our agreement starts at the three level. So we're not going to make a shape bid here. Instead, we're going to bid a control. Okay. Now here's a question for you, and I believe that you can't see North's hand. Let me ask you this question. 
how many points does north have? I love that, 13, 12, 11, and then Les is like opening, so God knows how many points she thinks is an opening. Um, <laughs> um, so, no, the one wrong answer there would be minimum. Our partner is unlimited. He could have all of the rest of the points in the deck. He is unlimited. All right, so... If he's unlimited, he could have the ace, queen of spades, the ace, king, queen of hearts, the king of diamonds, the ace of clubs, and the queen of clubs. Right? So, shouldn't you give him a chance to look for slam if he could be unlimited? You see what I'm saying? He's unlimited. Right? Nor Fred's partner right now may be sitting on the rest of the deck or he may have opened Leslie's hand there, which uh, was possibly below 11 points. We'll, and we'll find out some point. But, um, but we don't know. Okay? And this is something that comes up whenever you have a nice, clean two-over-one auction. There will come a point in time where you might not be interested in slam. Right? You have what? 10, 13, if you have 14 points, a kind of soggy spade suit, your 5, 3, 3, 2, your minors are the king, jack, 8, which could be absolutely no tricks if the ace and queen are sitting over the top of you, and your king of diamonds might be, uh, take, there might be a king of diamonds taking your queen. I mean, your hand could be an absolute tragedy, okay? But the problem is you don't know what your partner has. What if your partner is sitting on a slam and all he needs to know is, does our partner have the ace of diamonds? So what we call this, we're going to call it a mandatory qubit. Actually, we're not even going to call it a qubit because I don't think that's the right word. We're going to call it a mandatory control bit. A qubit is when you bid the opponent's suit. They didn't have anything to bid on this auction. So it's a mandatory control bid. And this, in this situation, opener facing an unlimited hand. Don't jump ahead there. That's not necessarily true. Let me ask you this. But put it this way. If Does your partner know, Nick, does, your, does North know how many points South has? Yeah, he doesn't know either. I didn't open two clubs, but I could have 20 points in my hand, 21 points, right? So why should North decide, well, I'm not going to make a control bid. Even though I have a control I could show him, I'm not going to make one, right? Because uh, my hand is crappy. So what? You had an opening hand, and if your partner has 19, you're still looking a ton, right? So, so... No, not here. This is just shape. Um, good point. And I want to say it over again, Carol. Thanks. Um, we are only making shape bids in our version of two over one. So two no trump just says I'm balanced, says I'm five, three, three, two. Still could have it. 19 points. Might only have 14. Okay. I'm teaching a real simple strip down. Think of it as like a hot rod version of two over one. Okay. Once you get this thing going, you're right, you are racing into slams, right? We actually are going to have some curbs. We're going to have a governor we're going to have to put on the carburetor later on in another session because it gets too easy to be looking for slams on every hand. But my point is here is this, is that as far as north is concerned, I could have up to 20, 21 points. And as far as south is concerned, his partner could have all the rest of the points in the deck. And because of that, we have to make a mandatory control. We can't unilaterally decide to go to four spades. 
if we have a control. Now a control is this. A control is either the first round or second round control of a suit. All right. So you either have something like ace doubleton or king protected, right? or you have a stiff, or you have a boy. Those are all first and second round controls. We don't care what order you bid them in. All right. The point of the control bid is simple. Is what we're going to do below game is assure our partner that if he ends up in slam, they're not going to leave two cards in the suit and set you. Okay? For instance, this heart suit here, we can't stop the hearts, right? So if we're going to be in slam, partner better have first or second round control of hearts. So, and this is, uh, there's, if you want to read this detail, First Rodwell bid book on bidding does an excellent job of explaining controls. And there is one thing he says that is so important. What you bypass, you deny. What you bypass, you deny when you're bidding controls. Okay. Exactly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show that we have Control of the club, right? If they lead the ace of clubs, we're going to take the second suit. If they lead a club through to east ace, we're still going to take the second suit, second time the clubs play. They're never going to take ace, king of clubs and set us, right? So that's our obligation here. We actually have two controls, right? We have a club control and we have a diamond control. Right? But if we jump straight to our ace, we would be denying any control in clubs, right? So now here's part of, I told you this is souped up, right? We don't know. Our partner might still be a minimum hand and have no slam interest at all, but he doesn't know what you have, right? So he's under obligation to make one more control bid. And he shows a diamond control, first or second round control. Right? So to us, tell me, what could the second... No, um, you don't show... It doesn't matter what order you show them in. Okay? That's just that's an absurd construction that I see people doing. First or second round control. Right? Life is not that tidy. It's not, I, mean, I mean, my life is not that ordered anyway. You should see my desk. You know? First or second round controls. Right? So the club is the second round control, the ace of diamonds happens to be a first. Let me ask you this question, though. When my partner shows me the first or second round control in diamonds, what can it be? Or? Boy, or? Singleton. Exactly. He's got a protected king, he's got a void, or he's got a singleton. We know that he doesn't have the ace. Great instruction for us, right? Now, what you bypass, you deny. What you bypass, you deny. So what do I bid here? Carol and Susie and Leslie, everybody's in for four spades. Yeah, we're going to bypass the heart suit because we don't have control. Now it's up to our partner, right? We have shown our hand, okay? Um, we didn't go blasting off for four no trump. We didn't bid six of anything. We didn't, right? We showed our control in clubs. We saw the control in diamonds, and we're telling them now the most important information we're giving them is I don't have a heart control. We've already told them we're a balanced hand, too. So there's a good chance we have three heart losers. That could be really important information for our partner. What if he's got four to the ace in hearts? Do you think he wants to um, go looking for a slam? If he's got three heart losers and knows that we have three? Right. 
So unless he's particularly strong here, and um, he is likely to end it at this point. Okay? You, you owe one mandatory control bid. You owe one bid. Owe one bid if you have it. The only way that you get to skip the game is if you don't have a control. You owe one bid. You do not owe a second one. Okay? If you're a weak, crappy hand, you don't have to bid the second one. But you got to remember your partner's unlimited. Okay? So certainly if at this point in time, you know, your, your partner may go on and, and look for something. He might have a heart control. What if he's got the ace small, right, a doubleton there? He might think that, you know, well, that's one heart loser. If he's sitting with spade honors, right, because you've got that soft suit, what if he's got ace queen third or something, right? So he, he can go on, um, but, um, but he probably won't. So he passes it out. Now, you won't hit every slam. But you'll hit more slams than you would if you were still trying to figure out at three level whether there was a game in place. If you were in the position after that three spade bid um, of, of deciding what to do, right? Um, uh, you, you didn't have the luxury necessarily to go through this slam investigation. Let's look at another. Let's look at another. You notice I'm not showing you any results. I'm doing that on purpose. So I want this to be about the theory. I want this to be about the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it. Okay. Let's try this one. This, you'll remember this one. This is the one where we had the seven card spade suit. And they bid two hearts. Shape showing bid here, folks. Game place, great game force in place. We don't have to worry about this being passed. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry about that. I was worried that eventually I'd start coughing. Getting over a cold. There is a place for three spades, Carol. We're not going to do that today. I will remind me at some point we'll talk about a jump in the suit. This is not that hand, though, I will tell you that. So we show shape, right? So we're going to just bid them again. Going on the game. Notice that if this were playing standard American, this is not even a forcing bid. It could get past there. And I know I would feel bad if it got passed out into two spades, right? I've got a really interesting hand. I'm missing the ace queen. Give me, give me the queen of spades in partner's hand and uh, one king in hearts or an ace and uh, put the other honors in the right spot, and I've got four spades, right? But I don't need to worry about that. I can just make a shape showing bid. And there's our partner coming through for us. Okay. So, how many points does our partner have? Unlimited. That's the way I like that answer. Thank you. Our partner can have all the rest of the points in the deck. At least an opener. He's at least an opener. That's another way of saying unlimited. But we don't know. So we owe him a control bid. Plus, we're sort of interested in slam on this hand, aren't we? Like I, I told you, I mean, I saw a game in my hand... After my partner just showed me 10 points, right? If we were playing standard American, he'd be showing me a heart suit with 10 points. And at that point, I'm already thinking, okay, give me these 10 points, the queen of spades, the king of hearts, and the ace of clubs, and I'm more than happy to play for game. So I don't need a whole lot. So I am definitely thinking slam right now. What should I bid? Yes, there is, Carol. The I have all the control bids is for no trump. Just go on to RKC. Just go on to key card ask. And I'm going to ask you all to learn how to play key cards. It's time if you haven't learned already. And when we we're going to do a little we're going to do some slam bidding in this these this next two months because I there's a couple things I really want you to know how to do. But yeah, if you've got all the if you've got everything controlled and there's no information you think you can get by controls then you can 
bid for no trump. Recognize that you're immediately going to be going over the game bid, right? So, would you like to know about the ace of clubs or the ace of diamonds? How about the king of hearts? You can get all that information below slam. All you have to do is bid four clubs. The partner's going to play right along, right? Because he owes you at least one control bid. He's got to. He doesn't know how many points you have. He doesn't know what you need to make slam. So he shows you the diamond. What is the diamond here? Don't worry. Yeah, no, because it can't deceive your partner because your all it's saying is first or second round control. Right? So he's not he, that's not promising an ace. So yeah, he sees four diamonds, he might get all excited. Right? So now you know that there's a good chance that you have you could have two diamond tricks if he has the ace. Um if he doesn't have the ace, that means he's a singleton or void, right? So you only have one loser. You've got the king of clubs. You've got the ace of hearts. Do you want to take control of this auction now? Do you feel like you're the one that knows that slam is a good shot? Or do you want to leave that decision up to your partner? Nick is going for... Uh, Nick's going straight to four no trump. Leslie is going to show the ace of hearts and leave it up to her partner. Oh yeah, yeah, we have a, that trump agreement was firm. Carol doesn't want to try for slam. She's probably a reasonable match points player, knows that slams don't score that well at club games anyways. They're either winners or losers. Just make your six tricks and you get an average plus. Then we got we got a couple for four hearts. Well, let's try four hearts and see, right? Bidding four hearts. And now if partner bid four spades, right? There's nothing to stop you from still looking for for slam. But let's say he. But now now you've thrilled him. Oops. He's a very happy man, and he thinks that is an excellent card to have. He goes to four no trump, okay. and we're using Roman key card, and we play 1430. I wish we didn't, but too many of you will be playing 1430 already to change that. Okay, So as we go up steps, we're showing either one or four. Okay. Five clubs shows either one or four key cards. The second step, diamonds, shows three key cards or zero key cards. The third step shows two key cards or five with the queen, without the queen. And five spades shows two or five with the queen. So two, right? The ace of hearts and the king of spades. Yeah, and we sing five key cards for those who don't play it because we also count the king of spades, the king of trump. We're also going to count as a key card. So two key cards, no queen, which is four hearts. Or five hearts, sorry. Two key cards, no queen. And our partner bids six. Sorry about that. Getting a little sloppy. All these buttons. And we get a six spade bit. Cool. Now, with all of this bidding, how accurate do you think you are? Don't you think that there's probably a really good chance you have slam at this point? And that you bid it right? I mean, you checked everything out. You showed controls. You did all that below you before you even got to game. You knew where, you know, where controls were at, and and um, then you were able to use four no trump and discover where the key cards were at. This is what it's all about. No.
I might save it yet for another day. All right, let's we'll do it. It's it's there. You, you don't want to just trust me that it's there. I need a lead. Who's playing this, right? South's playing it, so you should be able to see it. Now, one thing about all this science, right? All this bidding of controls, right? Is that, and when you if you play with uh, if you play with the little old ladies at the club, you know, and the old the old wily men and a lot of those guys don't want to ever show anything. They just want to bid three no Trump as quick as possible. Um, um, but you do give away information, like here, uh, having shown the diamond, you know, uh, West with uh, knows where there's control. You might just choose to say, okay, well maybe I should lead through that ace of diamonds, right? So he might pick a diamond lead. So sometimes you give away some information. It can cost you over tricks um, from time to time, just like uh, people who will uh, will reliably double for a lead um, will do better at match points. On the other hand, uh, in terms of finding games and slams, the system is fantastic using this first or second round control. Looks good, right? We have a spade loser. Uh, we don't have any heart losers. We don't have any club losers. We don't have any diamond losers. Just going to lose the uh, ace of trump. All that information was conveyed in that auction. Any questions? Okay, I want to just restate a couple of the things that we're going to be playing. And remember, you're going to sit down and you're going to play this two over one with somebody, and they're going to tell you that's not how you do it. That's wrong, All right? You're not, right? I mean, you could be. <laughs> but there are so many variants of two over one and so many agreements that this is something you need to talk to your partner about, okay? Um, you need to ask them if you, if after a two over one bid, if you rebid your major suit, are you promising extra length? And you will find that a lot of people are not promising extra length, right? We're going to promise extra length. It's easier, and shape is more important than points, anyways. Okay? So, this is our version, it's the Marty Bergen version. Um, I'm going to send in the class notes. I have some discussion regarding it. I didn't want to get it too soon because I don't want it to overwhelm. But uh, there's ways we can, uh, some fixes we can make once we get this down. Okay, so we're, like I said, we're, we stripped down the family Oldsmobile here into a hot rod, right? And we may want to add some bells and whistles back to it at some point. But right now, we stripped it down, we're showing shape, it's going to move really fast, it's going to be very powerful, okay? But other people will play it differently. Okay, so don't worry about that. Second, Remember that a two over one bid is to a lower ranking suit. There's only six auctions, right? There will be interference when you, from time to time. And when there is interference, the two over one auction is over, okay? And then we use other tools. Um, we still use other tools that we have available, like Jacoby to no Trump, okay? A bid of a minor, in a two over one situation promises four. Bidding two hearts after one spade promises five. Okay, so if you bid two hearts, you got five at least. If you bid it minor, you have four at least. Okay, could have more, but those are the minimums. Okay? You have to have an opening hand. Um, Finally, I want to highlight that one rule because I, it's, it's a little twist. I think it's really important. And then when I was learning it, I wish somebody had taught me then rather than me hearing Eric Rodwell talk about it um, when he was introducing his new book when I was in Atlanta or wherever that was, right? Is that if we reach, have a two over one auction and we reach Trump agreement at the two level, right? Which means responder has set Trump or flagged Trump as a certain suit, then opener gets to make one more shape bit. Okay? One more shape bit. Okay? If our Trump agreement occurs at the third three level or higher, the next bids are controls. All right? 
we have to make at least one control bid. It's mandatory you make a control bid if your partner is unlimited. If you know exactly how many points your partner has because of the auction, I don't know how that would happen, but let's say it did, then um, you don't need to make a control bid. But while your partner is unlimited, then you owe him one control bid if you have it. In other words, if you have that ace and at 11 points, right, but you've got that ace in a side suit, you owe him that ace. you got to show that ace, okay? If you have King Doubleton and it's your trump suit, you got to show him that you have control there because you don't know. That might be all they need to make slam. Um, Ralph, if in my... Uh, Ralph, do me a favor and send that... Here, never mind. Um, I got it. I'll get it. Um, all right, and um, let's see. Well, that's enough for this week, I think. Those, those are the basic rules. This part of two over one, by the way, is the easiest. Okay, I think you all saw that. We're bidding naturally. We're bidding almost instinctively, right? We can do this. Sure, it's like a control, controlling that suit. Um, but obviously, there's a lot more that we're going to use with the splinter. Um, but that will be one of the things we talk about in um, when we get to some more slam bidding. There are some parts of two over one that will be troublesome. Okay, and we're going to turn to that next week, right? And and that is that, what if you have five points? Let's say you have seven points, and you have six clubs, and your partner opens one spade. You can't bid your clubs. What if you have eleven points, and you have six clubs, and your partner opens one spade? You can't bid two clubs. What if your um, um, what if uh, partner opens one heart and you have three spades and four diamonds and four clubs and and two hearts and you have ten points? You can't bid two diamonds or two clubs, right? So for all these situations, we need a fix, right? And this is it. And this is all I ever told Ellen when we started learning how to play two over one was, if you've got a bid, if you think you're supposed to be bidding at the two level, but you don't have an opening hand, then bid one no trump. And that's the key. Yes, it's uh, as floppy disk. Um, I'm guessing Rich might uh, have a few years on him, something like I do, because I remember what a floppy disk is. Um, it's forcing for one round, called the one no trump forcing, right? And that bid can create more trouble than the two over one. Okay, that bid it takes a little work. We'll probably spend a couple weeks working with forcing one no trump, and how we make an auction go from that point. Um, and uh, Eileen, yes, you can get my notes and the video. This is what you need to do, by the way, for the video. I have a YouTube channel. You can find it by just looking Mark, looking at Mark Hugger and uh, maybe Next Steps on Google. That should get you there. There is a playlist of some 30, 40, 30, 30 videos um, of all the sessions that we have done in the Next Steps program. And this is our third session of them. So you can go back and catch up. The other two were play, playing uh, all about play of the cards. Um, you can subscribe to that YouTube channel. Okay, and then you'll always get a notice when I put when I put up a uh, new video. Um, if you click the notifications, also if you email me at fmarkhugger at gmail dot com, fmarkhugger at gmail dot com, then um, I will put you on the next steps mailing list. And that way, whenever I do anything, you will get it. Um, and that will include these class notes that, I'm, um, that I've been working on for a few months now, trying to get them ready for you. And I think I need an editor very badly at this point. Um, but that will include that as we get going here. All right. So that's it for this week. I noticed that they put 530 on the calendar. So I took it a little long today. Um, the... Um, we will generally try to end at 5 or a little bit after 5, so you can make dinner plans for uh, 5.30. I won't keep you much longer than that. 
Also, at any time, if you're on, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel to that playlist, then you will always get the movie at a later date. All right. So we're done for the day. Thank you so much for showing up. It's, it uh, makes me feel great to know that we're going to do this. Um, one last plug. Karen Ten is going to be teaching defense at some point this month. All right. That's why we're doing uh, two over one. It's because she's doing defense. We're going to, you know, so. Go to that session. Don't don't uh, stop working on play of the cards because that's the one that makes partners love you. They like it when you can bid, but they especially love it when you take the extra trick. All right, so keep working on the card play. See you next time. Um, just, I, I just made sure I can't, I've got the wrong computer going right now, but if you go to, if you go to Google or your search engine and you type in next steps class and Mark Hugger, you will get to, um, one of the, the, the videos pop up. You might even just be able to do Mark Hugger, um, on YouTube, go to YouTube and search Mark Hugger. That will take you to my channel and then you can see, uh, pictures of, of my cute and now departed puppies. Um, All right, so oh, first okay. story off we go. About is taking tricks about That's... how to use your pen. All right, we'll see you.